this is Mrs. Often, and I'm happy to be talking today about determinants of square matrices. Now, only some square matrices have inverses. Remember that no matrix that is non-square can have an inverse. Additionally, only some square linear systems have single point solutions. Other linear systems may have um, solutions where there is an infinite number of points involved. They may have solutions where it's three points involved. They may have solutions that have no points involved, or no solution at all. Using the determinant can help us to know when these conditions will or will not occur. So let's first look at how to find the determinant of a matrix. And a determinant is a scalar quantity. So here's my first matrix, 2, 1, 3, 4, and I've labeled the numbers A, B, C, and D. To calculate the determinant, I'm going to multiply A times B, multiply, I'm sorry, multiply A times D, multiply C times B, and then subtract AD minus CB. So I have 2 times 4 minus 3 times 1, this is 8 minus 3, which is 5. Okay, so the determinant of A, which is also noted as A with the absolute value bars around it, is 5. Over here, I have another matrix, B, 1, 1, 2, 2. Let's calculate the determinant again using the formula AD minus CB. So, 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 times 1 is also 2. So I have 2 minus 2, or 0. So my determinant for my matrix B is 0. The determinant of matrix A is 5. So pretty easy to calculate the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. Now, who cares? Well, if A or B is a coefficient matrix, the determinant tells us if the system has a single point as a solution. So let's say that I have this 2x plus y equals 7, 3x plus 4y equals 8. Well, here's my coefficient matrix. Hey, look, it's matrix A, 2, 1, 3, 4. I calculated the determinant of matrix A to be 5. So before I've done any real heavy lifting on this problem, I'm able to determine that there is one point in which these two lines intersect. This has one solution. If the determinant were equal to 0, there would be either many solutions or no solution at all. Now, let's say that we're dealing with a larger matrix. Sadly, the formula is not so simple with a larger matrix. I'm going to show you one method for a 3 by 3 matrix today. Um, this method is extensible to larger square matrices. If you are dealing with 4 by 4 matrices or 5 by 5 matrices on a regular basis, I sure hope you have MATLAB or another technology to use to help you with those. Um, but we have minors and cofactors that we use in finding determinants of a, a square matrix larger than 2 by 2. I don't think it's ter terribly useful to use them for the um, matrices that are just 2 by 2 in size. I think they're too tiny to need this. So the minor of the matrix, which is denoted Mij, this tells the row and the column that it, we are finding the minor of, is the determinant of the new smaller matrix that we obtain by eliminating row i and column j. So if I want to find M23, this is the second row, third column minor of the matrix shown here. Well, I would eliminate the second row and the third column and find the determinant of whatever was left. 
So the minor for the second row, third column is just 8 minus 14 or negative 6. If I wanted to find the minor of 3, 1, the third row, first column, well, I'd eliminate the third row in the first column, and I'd have this determinant to calculate. 2 times 6 is 12 minus 15, and I'm going to squish my answer in down here at the bottom, negative 3. So we're going to use these minors along with cofactors to find the determinant. And you may say, hey, there's going to be nine minors for this matrix here. And no doubt there's going to be nine cofactors. There are nine cofactors. Are you telling me I'm going to have to do all that work? In fact, the answer is no. You won't have to do that work. You'll just have to do, um, for any square matrix, the same number of minors as there is number of rows of the matrix, or number of columns, I guess, because it's square. Rows and columns are equal. So, cofactors are the signs, basically. They form a checkerboard pattern of coefficients. And to find a cofactor, we're going to multiply this checkerboard pattern sign by the minor of the matrix. So the cofactor for a given row and column is equal to negative 1 raised to the power of the row number plus the column number times the minor for that row and column. Now, honestly, I don't memorize this formula. I just memorize the cofactor checkerboard pattern, which is you start up here at 1, 1 with a plus sign and you go from there. So we have a 3 by 3 pattern. There's a 2 by 2 pattern. I bet you can extend to a 4 by 4 or a 5 by 5 pattern. So looking at my same matrix again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, if I wanted to find the cofactor for row 2, column 2, I would do negative 1 to the 2 plus 2 power. And that's going to be positive 1. There it is, positive in my checkerboard pattern. And I'm going to multiply positive 1 with the minor of row 2, column 2. So finding that minor, cross out, cross out, I get 1, 3, 7, 9. And here it is. So I'll have 1 times the difference 9 minus 7 times 3 is 21. Okay, so 9 minus 21, that is negative 12 times 1 gives me negative 12. So here's the cofactors. Now a couple of your problems will ask you to find the minors and cofactors for matrices. If you want to find, I suggest first you find the minors, then you use the minors along with the pattern to find the cofactors. Now, if I wanted to use these to find a determinant, and we're just going to stick with 3 by 3 matrices for this problem. Here's my matrix A. I can find the cofactors of any row in the matrix and multiply them by the entries of that row in the matrix. Now, if you guys see a bird flying around, that's my husband's bird, George. He has great hopes of being a superstar in the world of math videos. But right now, I think he's just going to star in Budgie Escape. So I'm going to calculate the determinant by first calculating the cofactors. So cofactor of 1, 1, that's going to be negative 1 squared, or just positive 1 times my minor, here's my minor determinant, and when I calculate this, I get negative 1. Then I'm going to find my cofactor for row 1, column 2, crossing out, crossing out, I get 
3, 2, 4, 1, my factor, and this is going to be negative 1. So this is 8 minus 3 is 5 times negative 1 is 5. And then row 1, column 3, so that plus sign that tells me it's going to be positive 1. And my minor is right down here in the lower left corner. It is 3, 4, negative 1, 0. This should be positive 1. And 0 minus negative 4 is positive 4 times 1 is positive 4. Okay, so there's my cofactors. Now I'm going to use this formula, determinant of A equals first entry, 0 times first cofactor, negative 1, plus um, second entry in the first row, 2 times cofactor, 1, 2, negative 5, plus the 1, 3 entry, 1 times the 1, 3 cofactor, 4. So I have 0 times negative 1, well that is 0. Two times negative five is negative 10, and one times four is four. So my determinant is negative six. So that's how you calculate the determinant. The great thing is, I know you're thinking this is great, but the great thing to me is that if you have a really big matrix, you only need to work with one row, just pick one row, and it can be easy to work with. Now here, I just randomly selected row one, but if I had chosen row two, and done the minors and cofactors off that, and then did all this multiplication, I would still have gotten negative six. In class, we're gonna verify that this still produces um, a determinant of negative six when we use a different set of cofactors from a different row. So that's what you need to know for this section on determinants of a square matrix. Remember, only a square matrix can have a determinant, and it can be important to us in many ways other than figuring out whether a system of equations has a solution or whether it has no solutions or many solutions. Thanks, and see you in the next video.